All right, Dan, again, thank you so much for taking some time to chat with me. No, of course. Thank you. Of course. So can you begin by telling us more about your new five-part docuseries, Giants? Yeah, I mean, it was a uh, the craziest adventure I've ever gone on in my life. We circumnavigated the world. It's the first time I've ever done that. We uh, we um, okay, went from here um, across to uh, Kenya, Botswana, South Africa, then over to Australia, all the way around to um, uh, to Brazil uh, to to finish it off. It was uh, incredible. Basically, searching out the largest animals alive today mm-hmm. on the planet. Um, And then in doing so, telling their stories, but alongside them, bringing back their extinct ancestors, their prehistoric, even bigger ancestors using the latest CGI um, to show what happened to them, why they went extinct and what lessons we can learn from their stories to keep alive the ones that we still have around today. It was a real childhood dream because when (laughs) I was a kid, I I was desperate to be a paleontologist. Uh, I grew up in, in the woods outside Oxfordshire. Um, And our house, before we moved into it, was owned by a zoologist who died and left everything there. And in the back garden, (laughs) they dumped all of his years and years and years of fossil collections. So as a kid, I was rummaging around through all of those. So (laughs) yeah, it's the reimagining of my childhood uh, through a series. Really, really amazing. Very nice. So this has always been your passion, zoology, biology, conservation. Yes, ever since I was uh, a really little kid. I mean, I I remember really. I think I was saying this to someone else. I I remember finding being the the kid tasked with taking the tr- getting the uh, trapped bird out of the classroom <laughs> when I was at school, um, and I really liked that mantle of animal boy. Um, mm-hmm. But yeah, it's been my whole life. I've been keeping animals with my parents. Um, it's what started as fish, and then geckos, and lizards, and snakes it got bigger um, and bigger. Yeah, well, eventually I trained a hawk um, with my dad. So. It was- <laughs> <laughs> it's okay, it's okay. It's quite insane. At one stage, we had, and I'm and I not lying, 12 cats. Wow, okay, okay. The mad, the mad animal family. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's a lifelong passion. And then um, we actually moved to the States. So my dad's job took us to rural California. Mm-hmm. And, um, and then I met hummingbirds there for the first time, those giant banana slugs, crazy animals <laughs> that I never believed were real. And there was a macaw that lived in my school grounds. And that sort of sparked this realization that there was a lot bigger a world out there to see. And mm-hmm. then eventually studied zoology to work, to do research in the Amazon. And that's where it all began. Awesome. Very nice. So how did uh, Giants uh, on this project come to fr- a fruition? Well, it's the sort of brainchild of um, Curiosity Stream and Off the Fence, the amazing production company behind the show. Um, They made, you might have heard of My Octopus Teacher, um, really big, uh, incredibly successful documentary about a man's connection to an octopus. um, Uh And uh, and it won the Oscar for um, documentary. And I was I was giving a um, I was actually presenting an award show in the UK, the British Documentary Awards and giving an award for natural history. And I gave it to Andrew Zicking from Off the Fence, who we got to talking after I gave him the award and we just and that's and that's the beginning of the giant story that's where it happened from and i'm so proud of everybody who's part of it because mm-hmm. everyone was a legend and i think yeah. you know happy crews make happy shows and mm-hmm. we had such a great time on this adventure <laughs> you can feel it when you watch the world share episodes good good so what do you ultimately hope uh, viewers take away from giants I think it's one of those shows that is super entertaining it's entertainment at its heart but really on a, on a platform curiosity stream which is uh, strives for knowledge and people go to curiosity stream because they're interested to learn more about the world and it does just that it's got it's full of really interesting scientific information incredible contributors from all over the world leading scientists um but it's entertaining it's an expedition series it's fun to watch and i really and what i'm excited about is for that kind of new era area uh, m- merging those two things, heavy science and expedition mm-hmm. and, and entertainment. I'm hoping that we can access a different audience and people who might not have necessarily engaged with stories about climate change, for example, yeah. will learn through this series that a lot of the animals of the past that went extinct, the giant megafauna of the past, died because of climate change mm-hmm. um, and changes in, in in the climate. So it's I'm I'm hoping that there's hidden messages within it that people will take away um, yeah. and will make them make small changes in their lives and maybe uh, stand up for. For, mm-hmm. for this, wherever they are yeah for sure definitely so you cover elephants sharks lions anacondas and saltwater crocodiles and giants yeah. out of the five is there one that you're most excited for us to see 
Um, ooh, they're all really exciting. The, every episode is so different. Okay. They kind of have, they they start in a similar way. We begin by introducing you to the giant ancestor, okay. um, and then go on a journey around the world. But from that moment, it's all like everything's off. We have mm -hmm. no idea what's going to happen. I loved the lions episode. I'm obsessed with big cats, um, mm -hmm. and I, you know I've researched cats, snow leopards, and jaguars, and and done a lot of filming projects on them. So so seeing lions in the wild was a real. <laughs> I wanted that to happen. Yeah, but... but I'll tell you, when we got to Botswana, we thought some, it was going to go one way. And then <laughs> we found out that actually flooded Okavango Delta is exactly that. It was real difficult to get to those lines, oh, yeah. even though they're colored. So that's a proper adventure. But I mean, I, I say that, but then I got in the water with a great white shark. That was pretty intense. And <laughs> then I went swimming with a 20 foot long anaconda. So yeah. <laughs> take a pick, whichever one you want. <laughs> yes, yes. So like I said, you always had this passion for biology and zoology and conservation. When did filmmaking come into the picture? Um, I've always straddled that line. So for me, it's been uh, it's been quite it's in tandem the whole journey i uh, i left school when i was 16 because you know i was struggling to come to terms with things in my own personal life i was as a gay kid it was quite difficult um and i just i didn't really see the explorer or the biologist yeah as me i'm a really big believer and i talk about it all the time about you can't be what you can't see and the power of role models and i just didn't have anybody like that when i was young um, to look up to and see myself in. So I I kind of bolted on it um, and I went more towards the art side, which I still absolutely love. And I left school when I was 16 and I did courses in directing okay. um, at a local charity film school and I made the most embarrassing film a about a sad clown that I played. Um, <laughs> humiliating, still on the internet, can be found. I'm not going to tell you how. Um, and uh, and then decided that really I, my dream has, is is too it was too big to to drop and I retrained I went back to school and then I went to university to study zoology um biology um and uh and then was just I mean it was a whole world of mm -hmm. possibilities after that and then when I started working in the Amazon in a country called Guyana in the north um, of South America I uh, took my camera with me and I started making videos and films and then that one thing went to another and then I got into a master's program in wildlife film production with the BBC Natural History Unit um, in the UK and was partnered with a producer, worked me through my first film and I've been making films on research trips actually ever since. So I now just do both wherever I can. Okay, that's awesome. Fantastic. And now you are the first openly uh, gay wildlife presenter, is that correct? I mean, I I check. It's crazy, but yeah. I mean, it is. Yeah, it is. There's never been an LGBT um, wildlife presenter hosting a major a series on a major network, That's really which is about. like mad. It is mad when you yeah. think about because wildlife documentaries, you know, they're quite popular, and it's been quite a few years. Um, so I'm incredibly proud of that. I think it's really really cool. I'm really excited for the fact that you know that even though it feels weird to say that. I'm glad that there are, at least I'm doing this so that there will be younger people who see that mm -hmm. it means something to them. I literally got a message today on Instagram um, from a young trans guy who just said, I just want to let you know that every time I see you doing something on my feed, it makes me feel more accepting of parts of me that I wasn't before. Oh, and right. I just think that, that, that it's those things that make you realize that actually you no know, talking about this stuff and being vocal about it especially when some people tell you not to is yeah. really important. Mm, definitely for sure and do you believe that lgbtq plus scientists and biologists zoologists they don't receive the recognition they deserve i think definitely um i'll take that moment as well to to highlight um uh there's many people juliana terra in our film so the anacondas episode uh an amazing lgbt scientist juliana terra one of the world leaders in anacondas um uh uh there's Lauren Mayer from the Sharks episode. She's uh, LGBT, world leader in Sharks. And um, as well, I want a special shout out to, to Seb Grow, absolute legend. Um, one of the world leaders, again, in ancient uh, prehistoric giant crocodilians. Mm -hmm. um, happens to be a trans man. 
Um, but these people you don't see so much of, and we did it totally by accident. The off the fence team just found the world leaders and they just so wow. happened to be here. And I think that is so cool that it was an accident. I yeah, love it. Yeah. It wasn't on purpose. Um, but it, we, it helped us actually bring out the best in each other. As soon as we realized that on location, it was a talking point for us to find common ground in. We okay, like people were so much easier to talk to. It was much oh, more yeah. comfortable for us. It was a really good way for us to connect. Um, but yeah, unfortunately, you know, LGBT people are far less likely to pursue STEM related careers, science, engineering, um, mm -hmm. technological careers as their straight counterparts. Um, after they finish at university, 50% less likely to continue on. Um, LGBT people routinely say that they don't feel comfortable about saying talking about their partners or their identities in, mm -hmm. in scientific workplaces um and uh and it is tough and i think that is again because those role models those visible role models are just not there as much you're not seeing them on screens you're not seeing mm -hmm. them in the media but those people are there and there is a thriving network of lgbt scientists mm -hmm. um, explorers and people all over the world doing it yeah for sure definitely and is it true that you were once told to play down the fact that you were gay while in this field uh yes um uh and that was actually the first time i really sort of was like no i'm talking about it now because i yeah. kind of hid it a bit i thought yeah. that it was the right thing to do to be you know walk into a meeting mm. and quite literally change my identity i'd walk in and be like all right how are you yeah, yeah i'm jam the explorer yeah i'll keep you alive don't you worry um and it's just false it's not real it's inauthentic but what happened is i went into a, a meeting in london with a a big uh, production company wanting to retrace the steps of Darwin okay. uh, on a beagle style expedition to the Galapagos Islands. Mm. Everyone, every, every zoologist's dream. And they were like, we need a Darwin. And I was like, it's me. And I go in and I got so excited because it was obviously such an incredible opportunity. And as any scientist would absolutely love to to do that and to be mm. on that expedition. Definitely. I got super excited. And I guess someone could say, camp i was in a room for most of the people in that room were women and i just felt really safe mm -hmm. anyway i left the room and um this person uh contacted my agent right my agent was like he's quite a lot gayer than we thought that he was going to be mm -hmm. um whether that was a reason why i didn't it didn't get picked up or whatever or it could have just been a completely random sentence that's nothing to do with it it was said there was a reason why she said yeah. it and it wasn't because she thought it was good yeah um, I, and I, and i've said this before and i thought but i don't think it's because she was a homophobe i don't think she was homophobic particularly i think what she said ended up being um but i think that she had a she had a search image for what mm -hmm. and a wildlife and darwin character was going to be and it wasn't an lgbt person yeah and i think the issue we have to change people's ideas about um, what search images are. You see it with shows like Bridgerton. People are like, why are all of these people from different ethnic groups? And you're like, just because you, they should, why not? Yeah, exactly. Ariel, Ariel, watching those videos of those young girls when they see Ariel, I don't know if you've seen it, the video when she, um, she's, uh, it's these young girls, the first time they see the trailer, yeah. mm -hmm. and she's black and these young kids are like, oh my God, she's like me. And you realize how important that stuff is. Yeah, we need the diversity and the representation. Absolutely. Yes, yes. Well, how are you going to continue to be a positive role model for a new generation? Um, I For me, honestly, it's just doing what I love to do. I want to be able to stop having... To, I don't want to talk about it all the time. I want to just, like... I just want to go on the adventures. <laughs> I'm really glad that I've talked about it a lot and that people are aware. I want people to be aware, but I just want to go on adventures. I want to share science. I want to talk to people who are uh, as obsessed with nature as me and go on expeditions and mm -hmm. um, show that, that, that any of us can. Really. Yeah, definitely. What is one of your dream expeditions? Oh, I'm planning them right now. <laughs> um, okay, so uh, how long you got? Um, um, well, let's go. <laughs> let's go. <laughs> I'm joking. I'm joking. I'll, I'll go for a couple. So I, I'm obsessed with big cats. Okay. Um, I've been obsessed with big cats ever since I was a kid. Had twelve cats, as I said earlier on. When I, uh, that and I, I, I've been sort of ticking them off. I, I've loved jaguars my whole life. I got one tattooed on 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 my oh, arm. Nice. Um, because I've I've been on many expeditions searching for them in the Amazon. Uh filmed snow leopards in the wild. That was an absolute dream. Mm -hmm. Uh but I there are there are cats that I have yet to see. And one of them is um I'd love to see uh the Arabian leopard. Um okay. that a incredibly critically endangered one. Mm -hmm. Um but also very difficult at the moment given the stance and everything going on where it is, but the Siberian tiger would be a total dream. 
expedition cool. plan to see them in the wild. Mm, that's awesome. I personally relate because I love big cats as well. I currently have six cats, so I'm a big cat. Amazing. I'm a crazy relate. cat lady. Yes. Yeah, I love it. <laughs> <laughs> and all the cats, they flock to me. They don't flock to my husband as much. He wants to, <laughs> he wants to bond with them, but they all just flock to me anywhere we go. That's the best thing about cats. This on their terms, you know, yes. if they've accepted you, you are a true winner. Yes, exactly. I mean, I love cats. Always, always love cats, and I foresee myself having many more cats in the future. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, Dan, what are some future goals you hope to accomplish with your career besides the, the expedition you're currently working on? Um, I, I, I mean, I just want to keep making these sorts of programs. I, I find it. Inc- I, 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 I think Curiosity Stream is such a perfect place mm-hmm. for me as well, and I'm so happy to be working with them because. It's a really, it's a science heavy, information heavy and explorative place to be. Um, and there are so many projects that I would love to do and 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 go on further field expeditions and finding more animals in the wild and, and filming them. Mm-hmm. That'd be awesome. Wanna... Awesome, very nice. Well, Dan, how can one stay up to date with you? Um, I'm on Instagram is my main place, which is Dan O. Wild, all one word. Um, I'm on Twitter as well. Um, uh, but yeah, mostly Instagram. That's where I put all my stuff. Okay. So um, be sure to check it out. Okay, perfect. Then before we wrap up, are there any other upcoming projects or anything else you would like to mention or plug at this time? Um, I've got lots of uh, hidden things, um, but I'm uh, I'm I'm actually I'm I'm in the process right now of uh, r- uh, writing my proposal for my PhD, which I'm okay. going to do. Um, which is exciting. Um, and I'm off to Honduras uh, to do my first collaborative project with Sony as a um, official collaborator with Sony. So they, I'm working with them on loads of new amazing camera kits uh, and going to be filming on an expedition. I'm I'm leading an ornithological study catching birds in, in the cloud forests of Honduras. So um, I'm going to film the whole expedition. And so, yeah, watch out for the bits that we're going to have on that. I'm going to be introducing people to all these birds. Uh, okay. <laughs> I'm just doing the expedition, so that'll be really cool. Awesome. Do you have a favorite kind of bird? Ooh, probably um, the screaming piha. It is this tiny little brown bird, but if you catch it in the net, it has this extremely flamboyant crest that comes okay. up on its head and it moves like a robot with the crest coming out. And it only uses that as a threat um, avoidance, which is, for example, if you've caught it in the hand while you're ringing it or mm-hmm. during mating. Um, but it is, if you should look it up. Um, okay. it's, um, oh no, I've, just, I've literally just got two birds mixed up. That's the that's the the, flo- the royal flycatcher is that one. Screaming okay. people is the one that makes this incredibly cacophonous call that goes like, and when you hear it, it's it's the sound of the Amazon, but that's two. Royal flycatcher number one, screaming peahan number two. <laughs> awesome, very nice, perfect. 